Hey folks, welcome to Guitar Wishlist. My name is Three Chord Dave, and today we're talking about the Epiphone Scroll. We'll get into that in just a minute, but, but just in case you don't know, we're taking a lot of inspiration for this series from this book. This is 1001 Guitars You Should Dream of Playing Before You Die. Check it out, it's very, very cool. I'm really enjoying it. There's links in the description below so you can get your own copy. Hours and hours, look how many I have like marked that I wanna check out. And that's just this week. So definitely get yourself a copy of that link in the description below. It is an affiliate link which kicks back to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything, but you know, check it out. So let's talk about the Epiphone Scroll. This is an interesting piece of Epiphone history. I think you will agree. So based off the Les Paul design, but on the base side, a hook-like scroll. All right, what were you smoking when you came up with that idea, Epiphone? Well, let's just think about it for a second. So just remember, right, in 1969, Gibson was bought by Norlin, a big company that had ideas. Good ideas? Some were not as bad as others, let's just say that, uh, in, in fairness. Some of, them had, some of them were good ideas, not many of them though. And one of the ideas that somebody had in the early 70s was to make guitars under the Epiphone brand out in Japan. Yes, that's right, Epiphones were made out in Japan for a long time in the 70s. Now, that was started off in the early 70s. By the late 70s, Epiphone's star had started to dim, in fact, they were starting to build quite a poor reputation. So in an attempt to revamp it, they came up with some new designs. And one of them was the scroll. And it came in three flavors. So 1976 was when we started to see these on the market. You had the SC350, the SC450, and the SC550. I'm pretty sure they're all names of Harley Benton models now. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, moving on, so with the SC350, you had a mahogany body, a mahogany neck, and a rosewood board, which had dot inlays in it, and it was a bolt-on neck. So that's the big shocker, bolt-on neck, Epiphone scroll, SC350. Okay, you can pick one of those up on Reverb now for about 1,000 euros, and that is, but that's had a neck repair at some point, so probably skip that one. Um, but that's the, that was the cheap version at the time. The middle of the road version was the SE450. Now, a lot of these were made in maple, maybe all of them in maple, I'm not 100% sure, but that was a set neck, back to the set neck design. Uh, you did have a maple neck, you did still have the rosewood with the, with the um, dot inlays. Uh, the pickups, by the way, both in the SE350 and the 450 were Epiphone humbuckers, two Epiphone humbuckers, or you could have open coil Gibson humbuckers. So if you're in the market for these, look out as to what pickups you have. Apparently there will be a G in the model number if they're Gibson pickups, or it was Gibson pickups. Um, you had two choices for bridges as well on all three models. So you could have a stop tail piece and, and bridge, uh, Epiphone bridge, I suppose, uh, or you could have a Leo Kwan wraparound bridge. So, you know, it's up to you what you wanted, wraparound or stop tail piece and uh, bridge. So. The other thing that uh, made these guitars a little bit weird was the controls were basically right on top of the bridge, like right beside it. So you had one volume, one tone, and there they were, right in the uh, right in the space where the bridge goes. Just give me a little bit of space, Epiphone. But anyway, moving on to the SC550, the difference there really is you so you had a mahogany body and a mahogany neck, but there was an ebony fretboard on there, there was a brass nut on it, and uh, you had block inlays. Apart from that, Pretty much the same, same pickups uh, and all that sort of crack. And that was the high end version of the scroll. So, why is it on guitar wish list and why is it number four on the wish list? Honestly, it's nice to see something a little bit different. And of course, this was a big move by Norlin out there to, to revamp Epiphone a little bit. I think they did something pretty cool. I like it. It's, it's something different. You could add a million Les Pauls to your collection and, you know, they'd all look pretty similar, but this is very different. So I like it. I like what they did and it's on the list. So maybe someday it'll get added to the collection. So I'd love to know what you guys think of 1970s Epiphones made in Japan, what you think of the Epiphone scroll and don't forget to hit like and subscribe before you head off and watch other YouTube channels and things. I'll be back very soon with more guitar related content on the channel. Guitar Wishlist will be right here next Monday. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it. Anyway guys, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Until the next one, take care.